Hi, today we will study Elmo, which is contextualized word embedding. Are you ready? Let's get it started. I think knowing the history before Elmo and after Elmo is pretty interesting and it can give you easy understanding why Elmo is so great. Okay, before Elmo came out to the world, NLP was so happy with pre-trained word embedding such as word bag or glove. Here, these word embeddings are numeric representation of words where the numbers have the semantic meaning of the words which are trained by tremendous data. These pre-trained word embedding helps a lot on the NLP task who even doesn't have the enough data for training their NLP model. Let me give you an example. Suppose there are John and James who are building their sentence classification model with limited trained data. John used pre-trained word embedding while James didn't. Eventually, we will see John's machine learning model classifies well on real user data since John's model knows much more words while the James model mostly can't handle the unseen words which were not in the limited trained data. Also, John's model will quickly finish train since his embedding layer is almost perfect from the beginning of the training while the James model embedding layer will need much more epoch to be trained on. So we think pre-trained word embedding are awesome. Yes, it is awesome, but it is not perfect. First, the pre-trained word embedding only has one numeric representation. In other words, one word will be located only one place in vector space. Why is this problem? Think about the word present. It sometimes means gift. Sometimes means now, depends on its context. It is impossible for pre-trained word embedding to put word dynamically in vector space depends on the context. So now our savior Elmo comes out. Elmo is a function which takes context as its input and outputs embedding. So the Elmo can put present near gift when the input is here is your birthday present. And Elmo will give another embedding for present when the sentence is live in present, not past. Human language is more complex than you think. Let's suppose you are building a speaking machine which is speech on the given text. There is an example that the same word has different pronouns depends on a context. Here we have a sentence example, I read a book. Since it is present tense, the embedding supposed to be similar location to now. The READ is supposed to be pronounced as read here. Similarly, when the text is I READ a book yesterday, the embedding for READ is supposed to be similar to the past here, and the speaking machine is supposed to pronounce this token as read. While pre-trained word embedding has one vector for one word, the MO can provide embedding dynamically considering the given context. Now I think we understand the most benefit of Elmo. Let's deep dive into this research paper. First, I highlight that the Elmo is a function providing contextualized embedding. With an example at the right side here, you can see the Elmo as a function which takes context as input and outputting different embedding for the word present since the input contexts are different. The magic behind is that the Elmo uses all internal states of a bidirectional LM. You can see the bi LM is nothing but just concatenated forward LM and backward LM. You know, one of the most benefits of using LM for NLP model is you don't need additional label but just need a very large data set to predict next word or previous word in given data. When Elmo is being trained, the forward LM is trained to predict the next word with given previous words, and the backward LM is trained to predict the previous word with the given future words. One of the interesting points is the Elmo utilizes all internal states, while historical state of art used only last layer output for contextualized vector. Elmo researchers found that the higher level LSTM states capture context dependent aspect of word and the, the lower level stage model aspect of the syntax. Why don't we have a look how the forward LMB trained? When sentence is given, the first word will be converted into character embedding and the character embedding goes into first LSTM cell. There are two main reasons why they use character embedding from the CNN. 
First, the initial layer's embedding supposed to be context-independent. Second, they wanted to compare the evaluation score with pre-trained word embedding. So for the fair game, they didn't use the pre-trained word embedding in ELMO. While the initial layer embedding is context-independent embedding, the later hidden layer output are context-dependent embeddings. The first LSTM output has a residual connection with character embedding. While the research paper didn't specify why they used residual connection, but usually, the residual connection helps in two ways. First, the later layers can learn from the initial layer's feature well. Second, while doing training with backpropagation, the residual connection can prevent gradient vanishing issue. The LM will be trained to predict next word from previous and current words. Importantly, in this fourth LM, most likely the embedding for read will be present tense read since there is no signal from previous words that this sentence is past tense. That is why the ELMO uses also backward LM to generate word embedding more precisely with information from future word. Like white, for the LM will be trained to predict next word by using previous tokens. And there is backward LM. It just works same as the forward LM except it goes reversely. So backward LM will be trained to predict the previous word from future word. Likewise, like I said from previous slide, one of the benefits of backward LM is this. Since the LM knows yesterday in the sentence, backward LM can recognize this READ is the past tense. And finally, backward LM hit the first word. So recap of this by LM, the initial embeddings are character embedding. There are residual connection between LSTM layers and train the forward LM to predict future word and train the backward LM to predict previous words from large data set. It is time to know how ELMO generates context-dependent word embedding. Let's check it out with the word read here. We have forward LM and backward LM's internal states just like this. In order to combine features from forward LM and backward LM, ELMO concatenates vectors from each internal state. Then, multiply normalized weights on these concatenated vectors. The normalized weights are set and optimized during training. Then, summing up all results from all layers. According to the research paper, higher level LSTM states capture the context-dependent aspect of word meaning, while the lower level states model aspect of syntax. Historically, researchers only used the last layer for contextualized embedding. Elmo proved that the combining all layers with normalized weight could improve the contextualized embedding. Lastly, multiply gamma, which is of the practical importance to aid the optimization process. According to the research paper, the gamma is especially important when just using the last layer for contextualized embedding. All information are summarized from the Deep Contextualized Word Representation Research Paper. I highly recommend you to read this paper. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. I will see you on the next video.